Okay, there's this woman named Romana Didulo, or Romana Didulo, I think. She's a cult leader from Canada. She calls herself the Queen of Canada, Her Royal Majesty, the Queen of Canada. Anyway, she's done royal decrees about not paying your bills. You don't have to anymore because she's the queen and she says so and all kinds of crazy stuff. This is her on screen if you're unfamiliar. Hello, Canada. I'm Romana Didolo. I'm the founder and leader of Canada First. As of... Oh, she was the founder of the Canada First Party. February yeah. this year, 2021, I am the head of state and commander-in-chief of Canada, the Republic. When she lost her election, I guess she just straight up snapped. Anyway, I wanted to listen to this, like this documentary about her. Just give you an idea of who she is, okay? So we're going to start right here. While we watch this, we're going to play some Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. We're just kind of running around doing whatever. So um, it shouldn't be any like spoilers or anything. I'll blank it out if there are any spoilers. So, all right, let's give this a listen. She tells Canadians not to pay their debts. Queen Romana's in power and we're not paying any more bills. Utilities are free. And you That's 100% real. She really did tell people to stop paying their taxes specifically, to stop paying their, uh, what is it, I forget now, to stop paying their water and their electric and their everything, their mortgages, all of it. It was all free for people who acknowledge her as the real Queen of Canada or whatever. Insane. Insane. Dude, I suck. I suck at this game. She also pushes conspiracy theories. A favorite? About the danger of the COVID vaccine. Here's how she would punish healthcare workers who vaccinated children. For each child that you have harmed, you will receive not one, but two bullets on your forehead. Think very, very carefully. That is straight up psychotic. I'm sorry, man. Is she in jail yet? Somebody asked. No, she's not. She's not in jail. I don't know how. Is this not illegal? This is straight up stochastic uh, stochastic terrorism. I don't know like how else to describe this. By the way, check out my book. Okay, guys, I'd really appreciate that. Before you touch that needle. Before Richmond, Didolo and her followers landed in Camsack, Saskatchewan. Residents there made it clear they weren't wanted. Oh, oh. Dude, I don't know how to do this. I don't know. This is frustrating. Like, I don't want to do this stupid training thing anymore. This is really frustrating. So I guess they tried to, like, set up shop in another town. I didn't know that. Interesting. The group did not last a day. That's when a Richmond resident invited them to stay at an abandoned school. There you go. That's when the school thing happened. Okay, uh, now we're caught up. They saw a vehicle coming down this road here. And what the heck is that? God, they're such Canadians, right? How Can you get more Canadian than these people are being right now? Alan Davis has been living in Richmond for 15 years. Her home sits directly opposite that school where the group is set up. You could say she's had a front row seat to all the comings and goings. I saw two RVs and then there was uh, two cars, two pilot cars in front and then one behind. A bit of a convoy. Yeah, quite a bit. What? Oh, it's a huge convoy, absolutely. And wow, this is not going well, and it's very frustrating. Say she's had a front row seat to all the comings and goings. I saw two RVs, and then there was uh, two cars, two pilot cars in front, and then one behind. Bit of a convoy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a full-blown convoy. It's scary stuff, dude, to see a cult roll into town. Yeah, quite a bit. What did it been like for you living so close? Horrible. You know, you watch the activity day in, day out. You're driving around school constantly, even at night. All right, dude, I need to, I'm sorry. I need to get those. This is driving me nuts. All right, let's step back. You're driving around school constantly, even at night. They're driving around even at night. What are they up to? Town residents like Davis <laughs> complain that their lives have been turned upside down and that members of Didolo's group intimidate them 
Oh, yeah, they were following them around with cameras and stuff at the uh, grocery store. They were going to the grocery store because the town didn't want them there. They wanted them to GTFO, and they refused. So as an intimidation technique, there's like, you know, one store in the entire town or something, just a, one or two. And to intimidate the people, what did Didulo's people do? Keep trying to pronounce it correctly. They followed people around with cameras. Really. It was disturbing. I was working in my yard in the fall, and I could feel someone looking at me or watching me. I spotted someone. Okay, that's not something you can feel. I know that you think you can, but no, that's not feelable. But okay, go on. And they actually had their phone and they were taking pictures. They probably have a thousand pictures of me. How does that make you feel? That's disturbing. That is straight up disturbing, for real. Awful. It's like, I haven't done anything wrong. At least eight people have taken residence inside that former school. A few other Richmond residents visit all the time. I feel my free. What? I was between the things and they didn't let me do the thing. This is frustrating, dude. I don't like the later Chocobo abilities are really annoying. The early ones were pretty cool. You could like climb walls and stuff. That was neat. This one's really, really annoying. I do not like this at all. Found residents visit all the time. Wow, dude, they put aluminum foil or whatever up in their uh, like in their thing that these people have got to be like unhappy with what's happening right now. You got to feel for them, honestly. I feel my freedom is um, basically stripped from me because I don't feel it's free to come and go as I used to. I lock my door. You didn't I, lock your door before? Nope. It's a small town. It's a small town. We don't have... Yeah, 120-something people, apparently. We have to lock our door. Tell me about the impact on, on your own family. My daughter won't come with her kids. Last two winters, I brought my mom here. Dude, are you kidding? How did I miss both of those? This is very frustrating. Here for a week to stay here with me. And uh, there's no way I would bring her here right now. There's no way. No, my mom would not sleep at night. Just knowing that they're this close, right? So just who is Romana Didalo? She says she immigrated from the Philippines, where her- That's correct, although she also claims to be indigenous. So yeah, I don't know which one is real. Parents died when she was young. Didalo yeah, it was the Philippines one. That, that was the one that was real, but she pretends it wasn't real. Didalo moved to British Columbia at the age of 15. From the early 2000s, she ran or worked in several businesses but truly emerged as a public persona during the pandemic. In 2020... I don't actually know her history, so this is kind of interesting. Canada first, draining the swamp in Ottawa. They adopted all the same nonsense talking points that the U.S. has. It's just painfully stupid, dude. 20, she unofficially started a new political party. I'm the founder and the leader of Canada first. It's time for us to clean up the swamp in Ottawa. Within months, she went from party leader to calling herself head of state and commander in chief of the Republic of Canada. Yep. And it was here in Ottawa in the winter of 2022 where Didalo made her first high profile appearances, a coming out party, as it were, at the Freedom Trucker Convoy. Hello, everyone. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember the Freedom Trucker Convoy. If you don't remember that, it was a uh, it was a a big thing. They were like protesting vaccines or some other stupid thing, and uh, they were refusing to deliver to certain areas or whatever. I mean, trucks were still delivering things, so I I don't think I don't know what they thought they were doing with these trucker protests, but they were blocking like main roads and stuff, and like just making a mess out of everything, and it was really really frustrating. So anyway, uh, she showed up to that and expressed her, like, support, I guess, of the trucker convoy. I am Queen Romana of Canada. I am God, uh, she unironically 
seriously shows up to places and says this about herself. It's painfully sad. Hello, everyone. I am Queen Rumara of Canada. I am backed by the armed forces of the United States. It is so painfully embarrassing. There are no more elections, no more politicians, no more politics in the kingdom of Canada. She even went so far as to burn the Canadian flag. Hey, that's her right. I have no problem with that. I think she's free to do it if she wants. After the Freedom Convoy, she set off with her followers in some RVs heading east, meeting followers in Montreal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Quebec City signing flags and kissing babies in Halifax. You are Those poor babies. Communicating with me telepathically. Leading her. I'm sorry, what? Did she just say you're communicating with me telepathically to the baby? Bro, get help, okay? You need help. You are communicating with me telepathically. Leading her followers to the sea. I will bless the Atlantic Ocean. She'll bless the Atlantic Ocean? Even outside of Canada, she's a very unusual person. I think she has more amongst conspiracy theorists, if you will, more influence than anyone I can think of. Chris I Yeah, I'm comfortable saying that. Yeah, she's got a lot of influence among conspiracy theorists, for sure. Christina Sarteski is a professor of criminology and social work who studies extremist groups at Chatham University in Pittsburgh. She's been monitoring Romana Didolo for two years. Dude, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I did it. I did it. I got the, the score I was looking for. I got 4,800. That's what I needed. I'm, I'm happy. I'm done. That's all I needed to do. Now let's see how far I can glide. Well, that's that's how far I can glide. That's it. That's 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 as far as I went. What was I supposed to do here? There are no fans or anything. Are you serious? All right, whatever. I think she uh, was speaking about her hatred of vaccines and mandates at a time when there was a subgroup of other people <laughs> who also felt the same way, who really did not like the government telling them what to do. Her anti-vax, anti-mask views pushed her following to 80,000 during the pandemic. People open to accepting all kinds of bizarre claims. Yep, she hit 80K. She was really influential. Still influential. She's not a nobody by any stretch of the imagination. Canada was sold to China. Canada was sold to China? By the conservatives and the liberals and all the parties with the blessing of the fake queen. What the hell is she going on about? I haven't seen this video. Is it true that John F. Kennedy Jr. is still alive? Yes, I can tell you, but then I'll have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Any more burning questions? Sometimes those claims veer from bizarre to outlandish. When there are ships, when the ships are in or up there. Oh, yeah, she claims to be an Arcturian. I don't know if you guys knew that. Arcturian is like a space alien, right? This space alien is like the, a lizard person. I'm sure you guys probably heard of, like, lizard people, right? She claims to be a lizard person, but she's a good lizard person. All the other lizard people are bad lizard people, see? And she's fighting for you as a good lizard person. Really. They change the, the weather. She has t talked about being from the planet Octorius. Yes, yes. The Octorians are the most advanced, yes. uh, like the Yoda. So there's an alien element to this. We came as an entire community of the light beings, yes. starships from... The light beings, starships. And she's got some really hilarious stuff on her uh, telegram, too. Hold on, let me... I got to pull the telegram up again. I'm sorry if I get any dings. Arcturian. Let's just look up Arcturian. All right, the most recent one was on 2023. Thank you, Queen Romana. As I reread some of the royal decrees, I could hardly believe that all these were written by a human. Of course, you are Arcturian as well, but you are still human. These royal decrees are for the freedom of the planet's people. The greatest writings in our day. They're the greatest writings in our day. 
as in better than the U.S. Constitution, apparently. Okay, go on. I'm, I'm listening. Right, let's find the next one. This is also from 2023. Yes, Her Royal Majesty Queen, Queen Ramana will be queen of the world, overseeing all other countries, so this never happens again. All leaders will be learning from her as to how a country should lead their people. I misspelled the word there, of course. I don't believe this planet will ever be left alone again for any kind of evil to, to ever exist again. HRM, all right, look, there are only so many times I can say Her Royal Majesty Queen Ramana. Can I just shorten it to HRMQR? HRMQR is Arcturian, so remember she's not from this planet. That's why God, Grand Master Creator, had to send her here because there's not one human on this planet that has pure divine intentions like HRMQR does. <laughs> okay. He's a Grand Master Creator. Not to be con so he's a Grand Master Creator, not to be confused with a senior master. Not to be confused with a national master or an expert or classes A through E, but a grand master. And you know the most entertaining about thing about this, these things? Clicking the comments and reading them. Dude, I love reading the comments on her crazy posts. Earth 2.0, and so it is. Where we go one, we go all. It's a QAnon saying. That's right, on point. Now let's get her here in America. Oh my God, dude. Come back to reality. This is not just Queen Romana's responsibility to ensure this never happens again. It's up to we the people to ensure it never happens again. And you'll make sure you educate the future generations so they never forget. Media, Anons, public. So I guess the, uh, the implication here is that Anons know. They know. And they're happy about it. But the media and the public are outraged. This is just painfully stupid. All good things are possible when the heart illuminates the mind. Wow, these are actually really psychedelic and cool looking. They look like Alex Gray paintings. I like it. These aren't Alex Gray paintings, are they? They look like it, for real. Did they steal these from Alex Gray? The tool artist? What the hell is this? What What's this supposed to be? Is this... Is this aliens flying toward the sun over the ocean or what? Like, I don't know. Just some wild stuff happening, man. Queen of our hearts. Oh, yeah. This is supposed to be an Arcturian right here on the left. This blue thing here. Really. I'm dead serious. Painfully stupid. And I, I got to close Telegram because it's obnoxious. Right. Let's keep listening to her Arcturian talk. An entire community of the light beings, yes. starships from uh, starships and star systems. Oh, stuff yes, all the I think it's connected to the idea that she's very important and very special. What I do here, totally, very special, absolutely. I think we can agree. It directly affects yes. up there, and that is why they are escorting and protecting my convoy. She thinks that she has been sent here, sort of in a divine way from God, Master, Creator, and that's the term that they oftentimes use because they they're not a religious group, but they do mention God sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not a religious group, but religion is heavily integrated into the belief system, and you cannot be a member of the group without being religious. So it's not a religious cult, but it's a cult with religion as a necessary component, interestingly and that she has been sent here to save people. So I'm not a dictator. I am guided by the highest divine beings. Oh, totally. And um, how can we verify that? Is there something we could do to like verify that you're telling the truth about this one? Or you just have to take your word for it? And I'm here to deliver peace and prosperity. I do believe it is a cult. I, th I mean, there's no believe about it. It's a cult, of course. I think the fact that they travel together in particular and they have a very tight inner circle, that they have certain uniforms they wear, they have certain behaviors they have to engage in, that she is very dictatorial towards the people who live there and demands that they do certain things. That all You know, unfortunately, there's no, like, universal definition of what a cult is. There are people who have tried to define cult before, but 
at this point in my life, I don't think it needs to be defined. And here's my reasoning on that. The word cult is, um, whether intended to be derogatory or not, is always taken in a derogatory way. People always feel insulted when you tell them that they are in a cult and it just shuts them down. They just turn off and they're done talking about it. They're done working with you or they're done anything. Cult, in my mind, is derogatory by default. It's bad. It's a bad thing to be. Ooh, hang on. It's bad. It's a bad thing to be in a cult. So naturally, yes, I... I would like to draw people's attention to that, but I want to do it in such a way where I don't have to tell them directly that they're in a cult, basically. So the bottom line here is this. Um, I don't use the word cult anymore. I used to use it a lot. I, I don't use it anymore because people stop listening when they hear the word cult. However, there is such a thing as a cult, obviously, and I have my own set definition of the term. I used to use Stephen Hassan's definition, but I'm not really a fan of Stephen Hassan um, or the things that he's written or his beliefs or ideals or whatever. For example, Hassan believes that hypnosis is real when it's not. It's fake. Um, he also thinks that, you know, I don't know if this is true or not. So, like, you're going to have to ask him, but... Last I knew, Hassan believed that, by the way, he's the guy that wrote Combating Cult Mind Control. Hassan believed that people could be brainwashed into being trans through the adult entertainment that they watched. Put it that way. Try to be, try to use, you know, words that are not quite as on the nose here. He believed that trans, sissy, adult entertainment was turning people trans he said that he said it outright on the twit and i had to message him and say what the hell are you talking about right now and he got in a phone call with me and we talked and he you know appreciated my input and said thanks for telling me your thoughts goodbye and that was it it wasn't like negative or angry or whatever and it wasn't even final it was just like okay well thank you for telling me what you think and that's it you know then he, you, you just hung up and moved on so i'm sorry i just like i don't i don't like the things that stephen hassan has had to say or the ideas that he's espoused, I think they're ridiculous. Um, many of them, not just the uh, the trans. What it, God, I, I got to think of a polite way to say this. Not just the trans adult entertainment sissy stuff. Not just that. There's a lot of stuff about his beliefs that I think are absolutely ridiculous, and I cannot take seriously. So, anyway, the point is that. Uh, I don't use Hassan as a source for anything anymore. Now, the BITE model was very interesting. If you're unfamiliar, it's an acronym. stands for Behavior Control, Information Control, Thought Control, and Emotional Control. The four ways in which a cult controls its members. And I appreciate that he wrote that and I appreciate his contribution to it. I thought it was very interesting, but then he went on to change it and completely morph it and turn it into something different. And now I can't use it at all. So I have my own conceptualization of what a cult is now. And my conceptualization of what a cult is largely revolves around the degree of control, the amount of control that people have over the members, that the, the leaders have over the members. Ultimately, a cult is an abusive relationship between the members and the leadership. And if you can identify ways in which it's an abusive relationship, 
pointed out pretty clearly, then it's a cult. For example, if you can pretty clearly and pretty obviously see that people are being taken advantage of, if you can clearly see that people are, I don't know, um, using other people, they're exploiting them financially, or they're telling them not to talk to their family members or whatever, if that's, like, obvious, I don't know how else, like, I don't know how to get around that. So anyway, um, it's an abusive relationship between the adherent and the leader. That's effectively what it is. And it's an exertion of destructive influence upon the members. People say to me all the time, well, Owen, um, you know, families can be cults because families influence their children all the time. You know, parents influence children all the time. How can you say that anything is a cult or anything exerts destructive influence at all when families do what they do? And to that I say, there's a difference between destructive influence and constructive influence. Families should be exerting constructive influence. They should be pushing kids to learn and build and grow and um, improve and be their own person and build individuality and things like that. Free will and, and all that other junk, right? But that's like, that's not what cults do. That's not what cults are doing. And that's not what families do sometimes either, to be fair. In which cases, I would say families are completely out of line and wrong and they shouldn't be, you know, they shouldn't be doing what they're doing. I mean, the, the point that I'm tr so laboriously trying to reach is that there's a difference between constructive influence and destructive influence and ultimately that's what matters that's the key is the influence that the cult is exerting is it constructive or is it destructive influence that's the question all speaks to me as a cult sometimes she doesn't demand as much as grant permission sorry is it true the white house and the parliament buildings are going to be Blow up. <laughs> I said you can blow up all of the legislature buildings in yes. Canada. Yes. Back in Richmond, it's the threats of violence that keep. Wow, that's disturbing, dude. I mean, it, 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 did you guys catch what she just said? She said she granted permission to blow up the legislature building. That means. I don't know, like, where she stands from a legal perspective, but that means that, like, legally, the decision is theirs. Legally, they have chosen to do this or that. That is about as disturbing as it gets, for real. Keep Roland Davis and others up at night. Could it be another Waco? Uh, when you think about it, yeah. Could oh, yes. Waco, Texas? Yeah, absolutely. Branch Davidians? Uh-huh. 100%. Yeah, it's another... Branch Davidian situation. They are just as unglued from reality. No doubt. You know, those followers, they worshipped their leader, right? And I think these people do too. Is she capable? Absolutely, yes. Capable of carrying out that type of thing? I think so. October 2023. Hundreds of people stage a protest, angry with the newest inhabitants of Richmond, Saskatchewan. The self-proclaimed Queen of Canada, Romana Didulo, and a small group of her followers. I think it's Romana Didulo. I don't know why she keeps saying it that way. It's weird. Tractors, cars, and trucks circle the school where the group has been living. We are town. We are town. Lots and lots of... The disturbing thing is that they outnumbered the town members for a minute there. Like, holy Christ, dude. They were they could have gone to like any town council meeting and taken control just like that. That was some disturbing stuff. Dude, what is going on with my Chocobo right now? This is I'm just like I'm lost. Okay. See if I can climb this little rock face myself without the Chocobo's help. I don't know if I'm supposed to be up here or what, or if this is, like, intended. <sighs> Breath of the Wild is so much better about climbing and movement and everything. FF7 Rebirth is a fantastic game, but, dude, 
It's like, it's so frustrating. I just want to climb stuff. God. Please. While the RCMP keep the peace, dozens of Didalo's online devotees from far and wide make their way into the small town. I think the RCMP is like the feds for Canada, basically. To meet the fake queen in the school's gym. Did she call her a fake queen? Greetings, everyone. I am Her Royal Majesty Queen Romana of the Kingdom of Canada. No, no, you are not. The ceremony for We the People begins. Live stream to Didalo's online followers. There's relentless PSYOPs operations to so discredit... She says PSYOPs operations to discredit Queen Romana and the team's work. Oh my God, dude. Queen Romana and the team's work. About 50 people, including children, fill the gym. I am that is so sad, dude. Kids. Kids were here doing this stuff. And all together, they declare an oath of sovereignty to their queen. Hereby declare my oath of sovereignty. After the event, Romana greets the group and hands them loyalty money, a made-up currency for her followers. Loyalty money, okay. This woman, who we'll call Mary, spotted her father, a devoted follower, in the school gym that day. That is so sad. I couldn't really make anything out until the point that she was handing out the loyalty money, and then he hugged her. What was that like? Oh, like a punch in the gut, really? I'm so sorry. Like, it's, I was in a cult. You know, it's helpful to the ex-members to refer to it as exactly what it was, a cult. It makes them feel better. It makes them realize, it makes the outside world realize that it's a destructive group that does untold amounts of damage to society and to the members. Oh, yeah, I forgot this, this, Microphone talks to me. That's like really frustrating. <clears throat> Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult, without a doubt. Uh, but for me, I have only ever been on one end of the cult relationship. Like, I've, well, you know, I get my mom was a, er, or is currently, is a cult member actively right now. But at this point, like, I'm done trying to be in her life i'm done I, I i'm i'm not even bothering anymore with my mom you know some people they're like well i know it's the cult mindset i understand that it's not them that's speaking or doing this stuff it's the cult that's doing this i'm done there's a line and my mom crossed it 16 offenses ago 16 you know insults ago basically there is a line and it's been crossed i'm done with my mom i'm sorry to say she's a cult member i understand that it's the cult that's doing a lot of this stuff but i can't do it anymore and ultimately you got to look out for you you got to look out for your own mental health you know when it when it's all said and done Anyway, back to this. It, it, it makes me mad. Like, you got to feel bad for her. This woman is still, she's still holding out hope for her dad, or she still loves her dad deeply, and it just wants to do, like, whatever it takes to, like, save him, to help him, to get him out, to get him free, you know? And there's, like, honestly, probably no hope of that. No hope at all. It makes me sick. Mary asked W5 to hide her identity. She's afraid of backlash from the group. Were you worried? No, you can't blame her for that one. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. There was a counter protest. We were worried that my dad would get into a confrontation with one of them and it could escalate to a physical confrontation and he could either be hurt or arrested. How far would your dad go for Romana? Dude, I wonder if her dad is Frank. You think her dad's Frank? You guys remember Frank? Dude that was like showing up to all of her rallies and d doing all the heavy lifting for her and everything. 
You don't think her dad's Frank, do you? God, you've got to feel for her, you know? She's still holding out hope. I gave up hope a long time ago on my, my cult member mother. I don't know. He's not my dad anymore. No, no. And she's not my mom. You know, my mom did a lot for me. You know, my dad was physically abusive, as I, I've talked about this before on my channel. Very physically abusive. Like, he would just, yeah, he was just, he was bad. It was not good. And there was a point in time when, you know, he's coming at me and my mom walked in front of him, stood in front of him. I mean, my dad was like, six foot five and he's like 400 pounds or something like that i don't even know and my mom was just like a normal sized person I mean, she's a little bit bigger she's probably um i don't know i think my mom was probably five six i'm guessing i don't it's been forever since i've seen her yeah maybe five six because i'm about six feet tall and she's about she at the time i think she was about 200 pounds give or take and she stood in front of my dad. He was coming at her, and she stood in front of him to protect me. I'm on the ground, uh, a little kid, hiding from him, uh, effectively. And he was coming after me. He was running after me. And she stepped in front of him, and he put his hand on her and pushed her to the side and threw her on the ground like a rag doll. And, you know, when you see something like that, when you watch that happen in front of you, your level of respect for the person who just, you know, went through that on your behalf, who was just thrown to the ground on your behalf, your level of respect is hard to break for the rest of your life, forever. But... At a certain point, I, I have to draw a line. Like, I have to look out for my own best interests. I have to look out for myself, my own mental health. And at this point, my mom wants nothing to do with me. She calls me repulsive because I criticize her religion. When am I going to learn that I need to be my own person? I need to learn my own lessons and live my own life. When am I going to learn that? At what point? I had to walk away after she so thoroughly f***ed me over so many times. After she so thoroughly hurt me over and over and over and over again and showed me like she just does not care. My mom doesn't. Anymore. I don't know if she did then. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she did what she did because she thought that it was her responsibility as a mother. I have no clue. But she doesn't care now. That is for sure. I, I can say that beyond a shadow of a doubt. And for that reason, I had to like separate myself from her. Like, I'm done. I'm done dealing with any of this. I'm done dealing with her. I'm done. Unfortunately, I'm just walking away from her, you know? That's what this woman needs to do on screen. She needs to walk away. She needs to get away from her father. I know that she loves him. I know that he's probably done a lot for her. I know that she probably remembers him fondly. She probably remembers him taking care of her when she was little, right? She probably remembers all kinds of stuff that it, it, it hurts deeply to lose. But he's already gone. He's been gone for a long time. And, and the sooner that she accepts that, the better. The sooner she can move on with her life. It's just really sad to watch this woman grasp at straws and cry and say this is my dad like what happened to my dad please dad come back to me he's gone the dude's gone you got to move on you you have to for your own mental health you must i don't know him anymore i don't know what he could do but i also think if he was led to believe that somebody 
he loved and cared about was being put at risk, that he, he, he would get physical to protect them. Mary's father first got involved with We the People during the pandemic, perhaps because he also opposed masking and lockdowns. What was going through your mind when he was beginning to tell you about Romana and the group? I just kind of laughed it off at first. Like, to me, clearly, it seemed like a scam or somebody living out a fantasy online, and maybe he just wasn't differentiating that. And I didn't really think it was a big deal at the time. And then it became a big deal when he stopped paying his bills. So first it was the property taxes, and then he stopped paying his credit card. Then she of course, she told them that they don't have to pay their bills anymore. This is so sad. Shortly after that, uh, we realized that he wasn't paying back his line of credit. He had said that insurance is illegal and taxes are illegal and... I'm not paying back his line of credit. I'm not sure what she means by that. Mortgages are a scam and you don't... Well, I mean, you know, he may be right about some of that. <laughs> like, insurance is a scam. Insurance should never, ever be run by the private sector. It should only ever be run by the government because there should not be a profit motive in that. But OK, uh, you know, not here to get on my soapbox right now. Here to talk about this poor woman's dad and the fact that well, she seems to have given up on him. I hope that she has. Have to pay any of your bills and things like that. Your mom could lose a house. Yeah, absolutely. So free utilities, free electricity, our water system should be free to everyone. No one should be. Should, should, yeah. But guess who does not have the ability to declare that unilaterally? Arcturians don't. Paying. If people didn't actually have to pay their bills, wouldn't everybody know this? By the way, we don't have any more income tax. Yes, I've removed the income tax. Professor Christine Sarteski says Didalo's decrees are causing real harm. I have watched people post videos of themselves getting taken out by the bailiff because they have lost their homes. I've seen court records where people are in foreclosure because they believed in her ideas and really believed that they didn't have to pay their taxes, their mortgage, and then... Believed with everything in them, yep. They were so confident that she was telling the truth about this stuff they were willing to go all the way with it. It's really, really sad. They're literally on the streets or they're living in their cars. My parents' retirement is ruined. Like, my mother will probably have to sell her home and go back to work. <laughs> you know the saddest part about this? Every time I hear somebody say something like this, like, my parents' retirement is ruined, my mom will probably have to blah, 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 do this, do that. My first thought is, your mom had a retirement fund? Your mom had savings? Or has currently? Like, actively? I don't think that she does. If she's in a cult, I'll tell you this, my brother got into, um, you know, a little bit of a, a problem recently, if you will. And uh, he needed, I don't know, $3,000 or something like that. And my mom makes like a lot of money she has a hundred percent disability uh with the military because she was you know because some bad things happened to her in the military and she was disabled by it anyway and and in addition to that th and this is the key she applied for disability and she didn't give up she was done she was denied disability from the military she's denied a pension of any sort and she reapplied Denied, and then she reapplied. Denied, she reapplied. This happened for four or five years. And she finally got approved after the fourth or the fifth time. These companies, these uh, government agencies, they make it difficult for people to, you know, to make any or to get into the, the program. But you have to keep going. If you need disability, that's what it's there for. If you have bipolar disorder and you don't feel like you're capable of holding down a job, that is what it's there for. That's what I pay taxes for. So your ass doesn't have to so that you can live your life without having to live on the street.
I know that, you know, applying for things with bipolar disorder and going through processes and everything is difficult. That's why it's difficult. Because they want to weed as many people out as possible. Don't be one of the people that they weed out. Keep applying. That's the key. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm getting on a soapbox again. The point behind all of this that I'm trying to make is that my mom is in a cult. She makes full disability from her, like, uh, military pension. Full disability in the military is a set amount. I'm not sure what it is, but it's a lot. And it's tax-free because, you know, you, you, just, you don't have to pay taxes if it's coming from the government. I don't really know why. Anyway. Uh, so my mom is getting this money. I, I think it's like $100,000 a year or something tax-free. I, I could be wrong. I, I don't know for sure. So the equivalent of probably 150 grand a year, somewhere in that vicinity. And she lives in a tiny little itty-bitty house in the middle of nowhere, Connecticut. Like nobody even... I, I can't even name the town that she's in, honestly, because it's so small and unknown. And my brother ran into an issue, uh, I don't know, a year ago, a few months ago, where he needed help. He needed $3,000. Legitimately, he needed it. And my mom couldn't come up with $3,000. $3,000. Okay, what is she spending her money on? Why is she having so much trouble, like... Spend or keeping money or spending money or whatever, keeping saving. She doesn't have any savings at all? Really? Like none? What the hell is happening? You know where the money's going? Jehovah's Witnesses. This woman's raking in $8,000 a month and she's got nearly no bills, basically no bills. And you're telling me that she doesn't have like three thousand dollars in a savings account somewhere that's crazy where's her money going you know where her money is going in all seriousness i do the governing body of jehovah's witnesses that's where her money is going it's going right in their pockets it's honestly sad and 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 you know the sad thing about it any judge, any judge would rule, like, when she dies, they would rule that, like, she can't deed everything over to the Watchtower Society. She would like to, certainly. She can't do that legally. She has to um, deed something to her children. But she doesn't have to deed anything to her children, who aren't Jehovah's Witnesses, by the way, if she doesn't have anything. If she gave it to the governing body already. That's what's happening right now. My mom is honestly, comparatively, filthy rich. Filthy rich. And she's giving it all to the governing body. She doesn't even have enough to pay, like, you know, it... Eight to ten thousand dollars a month, and she doesn't have enough to pay like an eight that or a three thousand dollar emergency for her son. That's what cult members do. That's what they do. They spend every penny that they own on their on their cult, on their cult leader. They spend everything on them because they believe it's an obligation. Because they want to do everything they can to help, to contribute, to provide. And this dude, this, this guy, owned a school, okay? Owned an old school that was no longer in use and gave it to this cult leader, Romana Didulo. Gave it to her. It's just sad, dude. Cult members will do absolutely anything for their leaders. Anything. They will take advantage until the cows come home. They'll do whatever. I mean, the cult leaders will take, 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 take. They'll never stop until they've drained the person completely dry. 
financial exploitation. You know, if my mom um, genuinely did deed everything over to the governing body, I would have a lawsuit that I could fight. It, you can't do that. You can't deed everything over to somebody else. You have to give your family something. $5,000, $10,000. If you have money in savings, you have to give them a percentage of it. That's just how it works. So they encourage people to give money or to deed you know, uh, their estates over to them. But they want to make sure that people are dealing with the official formal requirements of inheritance law. They want to make sure that people are, you know, but that there aren't, aren't people that are going to come looking for this later. It's just disgusting. Cults are disgusting in the way that they treat people, in the way they take advantage. It is just disgusting. So I, like, I've been on a tangent about this for a while. It's just, it makes me sick to know what's happening. It makes me sick to know how people are being fleeced, how they're being taken advantage of over and over and over and over again. It is just disgusting. No more big pharma. Didalo is also promising this. So we are replacing that, uh, that with our med beds. Yeah! Oh my God, the med bed claim. I'm sorry, I got to explain the med beds. They're probably going to explain the med beds in a second, but um, <clears throat> being space aliens called Arcturians, of course, there's this big ridiculous claim that they have access to special technology called med beds. And these med beds will cure anything. It, they'll even bring you back to life. If you've died, they'll bring you back to life. And that's supposed, you know, in some Trump slash QAnon circles, that's, they believe that that happened. They believe that Trump was killed by somebody and he's brought back to life by a med bed in Colorado or some other nonsense like that. Um, so, yeah, anyway, med beds, they're a benefit that will be given to all of the QAnoners for sticking by the QAnoners side. Just an embarrassment, man. Our med beds are actually now under control of our military. Med beds are made up healing technology that she claims can cure cancer and even regrow limbs. It can, re it can cure anything. It's supposed to be like the Bakta tank from Star Wars, remember? And watch how where Luke is in that tank and he's like got the thing on his face or whatever, that's like a med bed basically. That she claims can cure cancer and even regrow limbs. And watch how her outrageous promises affect her followers. Now, me and my brother was born with CE service. Wait, I'm sorry, what did it say? It said, hold on. Me and my brother born with CP, cerebral uh, cerebral palsy. Okay. I knew a couple of people who had cerebral palsy. It's rough. I, to my knowledge, it doesn't affect like your mental state at all. It just affects your speech patterns and your ability to like walk and things. Um, does a lot of damage. It's, it, it's pretty rough. Okay. So people born with cerebral palsy go on. I think it's where the, the umbilical cord is wrapped around the neck and certain parts of the brain don't get the blood that they needed um, in the early stages of development. Don't quote me on that. Yep. Will the med beds help cure that? Yes. Okay. It will realign whatever it is that's missing. If you nothing's missing, it was just like, you know, it didn't have an opportunity to form, like, or it malformed or whatever in the brain. God, she is so predatory. She's preying on these people's needs and emotions and feelings we're missing a particular uh yeah yeah, yeah. And then it will create one as a human being they will use that signature as a human being and then perfectly create you as an individual oh man this is just disgusting dude i can't wait to get in that i'll be running the streets i won't be walking the streets yeah. <laughs> Mary's dad has a traumatic brain injury. 
He has now stopped seeing doctors. He'll say it's a waste of time because any day these med beds are going to be here and, and he'll be cured. It's totally, totally. He has sold his soul to this woman, to Romana. And so it's so hard to know that there's, there's nothing that I can do to help him. There's nothing I can do. I felt that way about my mom, you know, when you're when you are sitting there looking up at like somebody who's six five and like four hundred pounds and somebody significantly smaller than him stands in front of him, stands in his way to protect you. Um, you cannot help but feel that way about that person. But at a certain point, you get f***ed over enough times and you got to draw the line. I'm done. I'm done now. I'm done crying. I'm done waiting for her to come back to reality. It, it's over. And you know what? If she came back to reality tomorrow, I don't know that I'd want anything to do with her. Because she showed me her true colors. She showed me who she was. She showed me that... I mean, my mom. She, my mom showed me that she, what she was willing to give up, what she was willing to do in the name of Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, I get she's brainwashed. I understand that. But, you know, there's a line, man. Like, I can only put up with so much. I can only deal with so much. You can only... If you kick a dog enough times, he'll think he did something to deserve it. Well, I'm done. I've realized that I didn't do anything to deserve it anymore. And I'm not going to be kicked any longer. Kick away, but I'm not going to be here to receive those kicks. Disturbing stuff. Got to feel for these people. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Uh, really sad.